fans, Robin here, and I'm back sans Pete once more with an unboxing for you. Yes, it's an unboxing of, as you can see, the Harry Potter's Miniatures Adventure game, which has been much touted for quite some time, and Night Models, the makers of it, have taken a little while to get it to onto the table, but it's now here, and we're quite excited about it. Some of that excitement has been tempered a little bit by um, some poor communication on Night Models' part. Hopefully that won't have a bearing on the game. Uh, I think Night Models could have done with tightening up their communication a little bit. We ordered, we've ordered more stuff than this. Uh, back in the day I did a video about it, uh, back when they uh, sort of got to crowdsource their funding for the game and, and then they changed their mind and it was pre-orders only. And there was communication it wasn't so great then and now we didn't i didn't really hear very much it was supposed to ship in september i think it shipped in october only just but it shipped in october and there was no communication about that and there was no communication direct communication to say uh, half your stuff you ordered isn't arriving so hopefully that will follow on soon which does mean you might see more videos of it um, and this one will be nice and brief uh, but so hopefully we can overcome those problems i say that like, communication isn't great but i don't need them to communicate now i've got the game so let's have a look inside so comes in a nice tin before I open it up. So it's a it's a tin as you can see and it's got a nice tin lid and here we have it Harry Potter's Miniatures Adventure Game Rule Book. And as you can see I've barely looked I have had a quick look inside but I haven't opened this bit this is still in the cellophane as it comes with some nice sponge there. I'm not sure what we'll do with that sponge. Let me open this cellophane for you all. And what have we got then? I've got the rule book. The rule book is reasonably slim it's not massive it's uh, right is quite nice and large so I don't know much about how to play the game at all really there's been so there has been very little communication there was a couple of videos on how to play um, to be honest they weren't the most inspiring so I'm hoping and um, this will be more interesting there's some nice artwork there um, and uh, you can see some cards and defeat them and a little bit more artwork there, so the models are, appear like they're going to be very nice. This is what attracted us to the game in the first place. Probably much better paint jobs than we do than I will. Now we've got some tokens here, and the first thing I notice about the tokens is that they're very thin. This is they are cardboard, just they're not the nice thick token cardboard we've come to expect from games like Shades Bar and indeed most games. So that's the first slightly disappointing thing, but they are they do look amazing. They do look really nice, those tokens. I'll just zoom in there for you. Um, so, hopefully, again, it doesn't really matter thick tokens, you kind of get used to them. And I don't suppose it matters, and if it cuts down on cost, then maybe that's a good thing. There's some pumpkin tiles and some rubble there, I think. Some skittering spiders. And there we go. So, yeah, that's a long time since I've read all the books, so I'm, I'm a little bit rusty on my lore, but there's some more. Things there, and there's some symbols. I don't know whether these are some sort of faction type symbols. We'll have to see once I've read the rules. Pete and I will do, hopefully do a playthrough video. Now, this part's more interesting. The game board. Game board is good cardstock. That's nice. So we've got a kind of uh, inside of a Hogwarts kind of dungeony type thing. I don't know uh, where that's exactly where that's meant to be set. And then on this side. Well, that's meant to be set, but it's a nice cardboard. Obviously, it's going to be a grid game, squares rather than hexes shaped by our fans. And there's three of those. This one is a bit beyond me to actually open because I'm a fidget. There we go. Three of those. This is obviously an outdoor set. We've got a bush and a tree root. And this side is more indoor. I like the ruins. Um, they're quite cool. I like those boards. I like the other of those boards. There's three of those. I assume they make the gameplay space. I don't know, there, I don't suppose it's very different. A bit more. I do like the Hogwarts shield there. That's pretty ace, actually. Um, Show me they're not hexes. You could have pitched them by shades bar. Uh, but anyway, there we go. There's, there's the board. Let's have a look at the miniatures. Now the miniatures are resin. Okay, that's before we look at the miniatures. There's a little Harry Potter miniatures adventure game. Look at what you could have won. So these are things that you can buy to add to the game. And there's a little letter here, quite exciting for children. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, Headmaster Albus Dumbledore. 
I'm not going to read it all. Dear student, we are pleased to join you for you to join us at the Hogwarts School of Wizardry and Witchcraft. Please invite and close all necessary night models, miniatures, and cards and items to play Harry Potter Adventures and Miniatures game. There we go. I'll put that there. Oh, yeah, the there. Kind of all there. Hey, miniature Maggie Smith. So yes, so you can see from the artwork of the uh, models, they are from the films rather than sort of artistic interpretations of the books. So this is a film tie-in, I guess. Um, so what have we got in here? We'll go and look at the miniatures in a minute. So it's all bagged up nicely, you can see mostly. Anyway, and there are some dice now. My first thought about these dice is that I'm not that keen on them. They are flat. Yeah, they're flat and quite like that symbol but the dice are flat that the the tiny tiny dimples not really any dimples and they're very square so it's a slightly aesthetic thing doesn't really matter um, but I'm not, not that keen on those I have to say so a deck of cards here and oh, what's this something else under here a magical strike uh kercher uh, Dumbledore, as it is, the, these are the character cards for now. I we ordered this on the pre order, those who did the pre order get free creature and Dobbies and uh Dumbledore's and uh, Argus Filch um models. So they're the extra cards for those. And then they seem to have cards Magical Strike, Stop Apparition, Magical Strike. I'm not quite sure what all that was. I do like the character cards, though, they're pretty cool there. So let's have a quick look. I'm not going to go through every single card, it's quite a deck. Of cards there. So, oh, they have different backs. So, there's these ones which sort of have ink time retype type things on them, and there's these ones. And oh, that's nice. Look at that. I like that. There's varying cards. Oh, there's a there is a couple of oh, very nice. And another one, one of those here. Look, oh, nice, nice card. So, let's have a look on this side. So, you've got Winter at Hogsmeade, if the heroes win this scenario, so we've got some scenario cards, which I'm guessing are these ones. The challenge of the heroes win this scenario, so yes, so these ones with this back, this uh, back with the sort of Hogwarts on it, are the scenario cards, and maybe they're all meant to be kept together, so I will not muddle these up. Got the Death Eater here with Impedimenta, which is quite cool. Acromantula Swarm with Bash. Okay, there's a whole card. You may you must place one Acromantula Storm with models in you know, models in the swarm place in a free space in contact with any board edge. That Acromantula Swarm is controlled by the player who drew this card. A Harry Potter card. So there he is. There's Harry. Expecto Patronum. He's got Magic Seven, Temper Nine, Courage Four, and Wisdom Five traits. Uh, Apprentice, Chosen One, Gryffindor and Potioneer 1. So there's Harry there. And he's got a Hogwarts backed card. And there Harry. And the bad guys have these cards. Which is what I thought was going to happen but I didn't want to say in case I was completely wrong. Um, so there we have Hermione here. Apprentice, Gryffindor 1, Potioneer 1. And as we can see she's got Magic 6, Temper 5, Courage 4 and Wisdom 7. So quite different to Harry's. Statistics, uh, we've got the Weasleys, or Ron Weasley, a Boggart. Place an objective marker in an open terrain space with no other markers, or any models inside. Any model that starts its activation with three spaces of this marker, or moves, or is placed within three spaces during its activation, must take a Wisdom Challenge. The challenge is failed, the model ends its activation immediately. So you can see there are various challenges in here. The Flu Network. Heroes win the scenario, they can choose one model to gain one wisdom for the duration of the campaign. So this is going to be a campaign system with various things going on. And when two enemy models are defeated, get to two victory points and discard this card. So it's a kind of victory point type card. So I'm not going to go through the whole of that. Pete and I will hopefully do a run through as I said. But they're the cards, they're quite atmospheric. I quite like them. I like the little diagram on here. Mastery, defence and cunning in the little triangle there. I like that. I would quite like the model picture to be a little bit bigger, but it probably doesn't matter. And then there's this little deck of cards here. It's a small deck which has uh, some sort of emblem on it, possibly the Ministry of Magic, maybe. Um, and this has choose one, gain two automatic successes in a potion, or ignore line of strike sight restrictions. So these kind of almost seem like extra ability cards. Polyjuice potion, range one, use gains concealment, 
It's a nice 12 until it performs any attack, cast a spell or receive damage. So these are kind of potions and extra abilities. We have a antidote to uncommon poisons. Removal poison markers. Just cut at random. Hedwig. Hedwig. A model with this card attached gains plus one wisdom and the scout rule. I don't know what this is, but it's a choose one. You can have magical immunity or armor. These are random cuts. I don't know how many cards are here. About a hundred, I said. Oh, cool down. Got this finite incantatum. Remove all effects produced by spells from target model. Any spells with upkeeps. Targeting the model immediately ended. I notice here, um, a bit like War Age of Sigmar Champions. I need to remember this from the play now. You've got cool down. Cool down and cool down and keep turning. So I think basically you turn the cards when you after you've used them and they can only be used when they when they come back. You can reuse them when they get back around the right way. Stupefy Expelleramus Difficulty Zero it says in the middle. Keep turning, no upkeep, cool down one, combat spell. If this spell is successful, choose one of the targets item cards that card may not be used for the rest of the round. So there you go, there's a random example of the cards. Moving on, we've got some bases in here, the kind of brickwork on the bases, they're quite nice. I quite like those. Now, I got the extras, extras in the set, which include Dumbledore here. So there's Albus, and you can see um, the, the, uh, it's pretty good. The lightness of Dumbledore in there is pretty good. Yeah, that helps. helps you see a little better. Yes, so that's Dumbledore, but he doesn't come if you buy the set. Now these models are in pieces. Now the rage range of this game is 14 plus. I don't know whether that's for the game or whether it's for... Um, I'll try to turn this extra light on. You may be plunged into shadow when I do this. No. No, so there's Hermione there. You can see she's only got half of her because the rest of her is in these bags somewhere. Her legs are down here. So the game is 14 plus, as I was saying, and it does require some assembly of the models. And you can see those of you who know these, no such things. Um, and you can see those of you know, so there's quite a lot of flash on the model, which is the extra mouldings when playing the game. So this is a kind of, in some ways, an advanced uh, sort of setup for for a modelling. And most plastic models now, or resin models, they come done. This does require some modelling. 14 plus, like I say, it does require super glue. It's not safe for smaller children. You've got a modeling knife to remove the flash and um, super glue to stick bits together. Not all of them need glue. I don't think this one looks like he's finally sticking in his base. But there we've got the um, Death Eater there. He's pretty smart. Um, and who else have we got? So we've got Ron and Harry in here somewhere. There's a bunch of arms and legs. Uh, it's quite interesting. No notice on the model, mine is quite long legs. Um, and uh, there, Harry's and Ron's legs. Um, the cloak, and again, you, I think the flash on those isn't too bad actually. Uh, I won't get them out of the bag. Got some spiders here. Oh, no model, as you can see, and then you can see those. I'll get, we'll get one of those out of the bag to show you. And the resin, you know, it's resin, so you've got to be, you know, polystyrene cement or anything on them. So there go, there's some spidery, skittery spiders. Um, so these need sticking together, obviously. But there we have uh, Harry, looking pretty cool, and there is Ron. So that's about it. So there you go. That's a quick unboxing of the box of the tin for you. There are lots of other models available. We have ordered some of those. When they come, I will open them for you and show you. The Lord Volder model looks entirely cool. I will report back on how difficult or easy they are to stick together once I've done so. Uh, but I hope you found that useful, hope you're interesting. Let me know if you've bought the game, what you think of it. If you are thinking of buying the game, if there's anything you want to know about the game, if you want to, if you want to buy it, I think probably the most interesting will be to people whose children love Harry Potter will be, can they play this game with them? How easy is it? How accessible it is? And I'll definitely be reporting back on that. So there you go, that is the unboxing. I so say I hope you found it useful. As usual, I've made a mess. Pete's not here to help tie me up. But until next time, when Pete will be here, I'm sure, Bye!